Bravo, let's give it up to the Queen, Jesus, and technology. Bravo. Uh, Guy, I, I was having a chat with Guy Phillips and outside. Where, where's Guy in the audience? Guy, uh, well, I haven't been here since 2006, and I think you had Sir Martin Sorrell that year, and the year before you had Billy Gates, uh, which was quite a, a, amazing. But I don't know what you're going to do next year after having the Queen and Jesus Christ at, you know, What's next? What's... <laughs> oh dear. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm James Aiken, and uh, I'm not a queen. Or maybe I am. And uh, I'm not Jesus Christ, but some people in the company think that I think I might be. Uh, and I'm not Mr. Technology, but I have spent 18 years in digital media. And what my career, my whole career, in digital media has been about understanding online psychological behavior. That's pretty much what I've been doing. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been based in Seattle, New York, London, Canada. Uh, I founded, uh, I was one of the, on the founding team of Avenue A, and uh, some of you will know Media Brokers and Atlas Europe here. Uh, I've also been an active uh, angel investor since my Media Brokers days. Uh, with a number of companies, as you can see up above. And now I rest my hat at Exchange Lab, who's the leader of programmatic media and marketing intelligence, uh, working on PC, mobile, tablets, and video. We have offices here. We're founded here in London 2007. We have offices in New York, Toronto, San Paolo, and Istanbul. So, what do the Queen, Jesus, and technology have in common? Well, they all touch humanity, pretty much. And if we start with the first character, the Queen, you spend most of your life waving at the Queen. She waves at you, just as we saw uh, Her Majesty waving to you all here. But if you actually get touched by the Queen, it's a transformative experience because you actually become not a common man, but a knight or a dame. Fast forward, Jesus Christ, when they, so they say, so they say, when he touches people, he heals lepers. He takes water and turns it into wine. Technology, technology has been trying to replicate this touch since its inception. Specifically, advancements in technology for advertising's sake. We are here at the Internet Advertising Bureau. Technology tries to, we've been developing technology to make advertising more relevant and more meaningful so that we can touch our consumers much more deeply. So, for you, those of you that know my London. 10-year career, I, I did enjoy my two to three to four plus martini lunch. And, you know, it was, it was, it was a good experience because, you know, you get to know people. You, you know, someone who, who's your client, you get to know your suppliers, and you, you could touch each other and, you know, get to know each other. Because guess what, guys? We're an industry obsessed with touch. But guess what? That's not good enough anymore. Fast forward in the year 2000. In the year 2000, everyone started consuming more digital media. We started with web, PC-based media. And uh, I'll never forget, I, I, I went to Seattle and I went to work for a company, Avenue A, and the founder, Scott Lipsky, had invented cookie technology on Amazon. And basically, when you, when you actually went to Amazon, I'd go and it would say, here's all the books on digital media and here's 25% off. That touched me. I thought that was amazing. It was relevant to me. So he invented the one-by-one pixel GIF, and a lot of new companies became developed, and there's a lot of companies here that have their heritage based in this, in this precedent. Things like this came up on the wall. Uh, these were sketches on whiteboards, and companies like Atlas and DoubleClick were born, and they started dropping tags on, on advertisers' page touch points so that they could start understanding users in more depth. And that was great, but actually to scale those buys, the ad network model came into, into light, and you saw all these ad networks that popped up during that time period. So, guess what? <laughs> touch got expensive, because once people realized how they could touch people more deeply, the internet titans 
decided to get in the game. And we saw a huge amount of consolidation. We saw AOL starting it with that advertising.com for a 435 million acquisition. We saw Yahoo come in in 2007 taking right medium blue lithium, the technology and the scaler of the touch points. You saw Google get in the game with the 3.2 billion acquisition, followed up by, I was in the, a quant of 6.2 billion acquisition, and Facebook's in the game buying mobile. They actually bought Atlas. And this is all about it becoming expensive, and it's still counting. And I think we're in a new era where we're going to see more consolidation because this touch is so valuable. So here we are. How many times have you seen this? Uh, this is all about finding out what touch matters. Which are these, these companies matter? Okay? Which ones are actually making an impact for me as a marketer in my business? So I thought I'd show you some, some examples of touch that I think matters. So, I don't know if you guys read this article. In the New York Times, it, it caught my attention. And this is Juno, uh, the teenage pregnant girl movie. I don't know if you saw that. Um, but this was the article the New York Times uh, published, how Target figured out a teen girl was pregnant before her father did. And essentially, this is about retailers using touch. So they knew that this, they had their credit card information, her order ID, and they knew that she was buying folic acid and pregnancy type of vitamins. And what happened was, is they had her address and they started doing direct mail to her house, which for those of you that have children know, that you've got to have back and plays, nappies, and there's so much kit that goes with this. And they, were, they are big customers for Target. So they're, they're sending all these offers out to, out to this, this uh, teenage woman's uh, house, and the father calls up Target and complains and says, this is outrageous, she's a teenager, what the hell's going on here? To, uh, to the fellow at Target, Five days later, he called back to that, that manager and apologized because she was, in fact, pregnant. I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> this was a beautiful one, too. This was here in the UK. This was uh, Media Brokers Days, and one that I always, I always really, really touched me. Essentially, Weight Watchers thought that this was their target audience. Okay? This is who they were gonna, this is who they were gonna target for their online media campaigns. Guess what? This is their target audience online. Okay, so literally what happened is we dropped a bunch of tags on Arsenal, Manu, and Chelsea. Okay, and it performed 2,200 times better on conversions in terms of signing people up to Weight Watchers. Okay, and what's, what's, what's crazy is it's almost like someone tapping you on the shoulder because, you know, the fellow on the, on the left there, you know, his, his mate on the right, he's feeling a wee bit tubby, you know, he's having a couple too many pints, you know, he doesn't want to turn to his mate and say, I'm feeling a wee bit tubby, you want to go for a jog? Or how about we go sign up for the Weight Watchers program? <laughs> like, that's never going to happen. However, when we actually took the campaign and went against what the agency briefed and put it on Man U, Chelsea, Chelsea and Arsenal, we touched him more deeply than his mate did. Crazy, right? But this is what's happening. Nissan, another example. So Nissan thought they wanted, they were selling the Ultima. This happened with Exchange Lab. And uh, they figured, okay, we want to buy all the cookies that have been to our site and retarget them because they're on Ultima. And uh, we want to retarget them with, with impressions, okay, on, on various devices. Well, we, we basically put them into what is essentially this programmatic media touch that I call, where, as I said, these internet titans now have pools of inventory, okay? Now, a lot of the trading desks might use one, Invite Media on Google, or, or they might use Write Media for Yahoo. We have a different model. We look at them all because you want to scale that segment, okay? But what actually happened, there was no scale. In this example, BBC was using AppNexus to make their inventory biddable, okay? Goes in, and by the way, this model, it's, it's all happening in milliseconds, as most of you know. And bang, these are all the advertisers competing to win the impressions. And, you know, you've seen on the market the likes of Rocket Fuel, you know, at, at a 1.7 billion acquisition. That's why I think it's a very interesting time right now in our business, because we're seeing the market uh, bounce back. And it's essentially built on retargeting a lot of this stuff. But here's, here's the other problem. It doesn't always work. 
So Visa, Zen, Apple, they, their touch points are about people and selling iPods. And Nissan, they want to buy their, their users back who have been on the site. They win the bid. Whoopee! They're serving an impression, and they're getting nothing. And they're only serving maybe, I, I can't remember the stats, but there wasn't a significant amount of impressions to even fulfill a 5K buy, even if you're trolling all the oceans, all the big internet titans, exchange, exchange marketplaces. So this is where the human humanity comes into play in technology. We're in advertising ad tech. What about advertising? So let's think creatively about how else we can go about and figure out the touch points that matter. So one of the traders figured out that actually use lookalike modeling, which a lot of companies are starting to bring up to fruition and plug into the exchanges, and figure out what the cookie's characteristics are. Married, college-educated women, and guess what? Those cookies, same characteristics, were sh shared in the casual gaming category. So we went into the casual gaming category, and we found one site that delivered so, so many results for Nissan, it was insane. Farmville. Would Nissan ever go out and go to Farmville? Highly unlikely. So it's very interesting uh, that that trend happened. And uh, as we move on into technology's replication of touch today, I think it's important to go back to the topic. You know, the Queen, Commonwealth shrinking. She's only got, she's got 16 countries. And what, what's going on in Scotland? They're having a referendum. What's happening in Australia? Are they going to stay? Jesus Christ. He's got about 30% of the world's population. You know, that's about the, as many Christians there are in the world. But technology, we have them all. We have them all. So our touch is pretty powerful. So I'd like to add something that, that's kind of fun. Uh, I'd like to wrap up with is, uh, is sort of how we at Exchange Lab see this touch. And uh, you might have seen one of our characters on stage earlier, so I'll end with that. It is not the time to despair, for we are here now. Our experience, our technology, our knowledge is yours. So thanks. As you can see at the end, uh, you might catch me in the pub having a pint. So any questions, uh, I'll be around. And thanks for having me, and thanks for voting us in. We appreciate the opportunity. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks.